Hello. Today I'm going to introduce you to my tool. I am a traditional engraver, so I actually use the traditional tool. That's why I am a traditional engraver. I use hammer and chisel mostly, and sometimes I use something the tag and call uh, Bulino. Uh, the bells call it an e shop. Uh, I'm not quite sure how it's called in the US. So let me show you. So obviously that's the hammers and that's a chisel. That's a bolino tool. I also use this thing which is called an engraver. It's made by uh, Dremel. I use it to do the background to stipple the background because I like the result and uh, the tool is very cheap. It costs like uh, between 15 and 20 dollars and uh, I've liked the result so I really don't see why I should buy something very expensive to have something which might not be as satisfying or not more satisfying at least. I usually like my background to be light, but I like them to be dark, which means that they cannot have too much reflection or as little reflection as possible, which of course is because of the tool. You need to have a sharp um, tool with a very um, sharp angle, let's say. So, about the hammer. I got four hammer. I got this one, which is the obvious, which I made myself. These two are actual Belgian hammer, which I bought in Belgium. And that's what I made myself. Why do I have so many hammer? Because sometimes, for example, if I do remove the background of a deep relief, I will use a hammer which is heavier. Because a heavier hammer of course is going to give me more impact or stronger impact against the chisel. And uh, since the chisel is going to be to remove more metal than a regular 90 degree angle chisel, it's going to, uh, to require more force to remove the metal. So I use that hammer mostly to remove the background. Sometimes if I have to do something heavy, I cannot think about anything right now, I will also use it. Most of the time I use this one. This one is my um, medium sized hammer. I use it to do mostly the main cut. For example, if I do a scroll, I will do I will cut the skeleton of that chisel of that sorry scroll with that one. To do the shading, I will use mostly this one. This one is a very light hammer, and I like it to do um, to do the shading or to do anything very light, which I may want. For example, if I have to do some tiny lettering, lettering sorry, uh, I will use that. This one I very seldom use because, because it's just too heavy for, for, my, for the way I engrave. But I made it, so I displayed. <laughs> uh, now about the chisel. I got three types of chisel. I got a chisel like this one, which I use most of the time. It's a 90 degree angle chisel. And uh, I use it for basically everything. Almost everything. This one is a 120 degree angle chisel. I use it when I want to think to have something which is going to be wide but not deep. 
For example, if I do an English crawl, I will use that, especially on a large English crawl, I will use that because I want the, the cut inside the scroll to be wider so they will show better. And I got this one, which is a flat chisel. A flat chisel is used in my book for uh, removing the background. I got several sizes. The wide one are used to remove a larger surface, and the narrow one is used to uh, to go into the angle. Usually what I would do for an angle, for example, where to, to, um, to leave meat, it's going to create a sharp angle and the flat chisel, as small as you can make it, is never going to go to the angle. So I will actually go to the angle with my uh, regular chisel and then I will remove as much as I can with my flat chisel going as close as I can to the angle. Uh, I'm not sure I'm very clear, but basically if you get a sharp angle, you cannot go to the, the bottom of the sharp angle with something flat, obviously. So you have to use something which is also sharp, an angle which is smaller or equivalent to the angle you have between the two um, motifs or the two ornament. I got some very small uh, flat chisel, very f small flat chisel are extremely fragile. If you bend them in any way, they are going to break. Uh, that's one of the inconveniences of this tool. Um, I use only carbide. Uh, because I am quite lazy and I don't like to uh, to try to hunt down the right tool for the job. So I use carbide for everything and it worked for me. Oh, the last one is a Bolino tool. The Bolino tool I use sometimes when I want to uh, to improve the shape of a curve, for example, if I, my chisel didn't work the way I want, or if I got a very sharp uh, turn, sometimes the heel of the chisel is going to mark the ornament. So I will use a Bolino tool. Bolino tool are also very fragile. They are not, this one at least, is not really made to, uh, to go deep and uh, into a sharp curve. It can go deep reasonably if you go more or less straight or if you got a very soft uh, curve. But if you got a very sharp curve, you are going to break it all the time. So if you do that, you instead to, uh, to try to go deep and sharp, you go shallow and you go shallow repeatedly until you are the deepness you are expecting. I am going to continue this video on the, on the microscope so I can show you the, the point, the cutting point of the tool. Uh, this one as I was saying, it's called an engraver. It's made by sorry, it's, yeah, it's called engraver, and and it's made by uh, um, by Dremel, sorry, and uh, it vibrates uh, longitudinally, and it vibrates very fast, but not very. Um, the vibration is just that a vibration. I mean the tool is going to go up and down but it's going to be going up and down for maybe a few tenths of a millimeter, maybe three or four tenths of a millimeter. I suppose you can you could adopt that thing to cut something if you really wanted to, but I don't use it for that purpose. I use it only for um, um, for stippling the background. Um, as I was saying, I like my background to be dark and to be texture, but not a heavy texture. 
Uh, it's more like, hmm, how would I say? I mean, if you were comparing a beach, how uh, they sand beach and uh, pedal beach, and mine would be more like sand. I like it uniform because it breaks the light more pleasantly instead to have something very heavy whereas the only thing which is going to make it dark is whatever painting you are going to put on your background I don't like my background with a heavy painting like people do very often because it completely removes the texture of the thing and I like my background to have texture like that you got a contrast between the, the ornament and the background, the ornament being polished and uh, reflective reflective yeah reflective and uh, the background being dark and absorbing the light of course in order to have a dark absorbing light background you need to have a tool which is going to be very sharp the more obtuse the, the angle the more reflection you will have towards the viewer it's exactly like the rest of the chisel. Oh, actually, maybe I should add something about the chisel. Okay, I use mostly 90 degree angle chisel because, from my point of view, the engraving need to be dark on the bright background. So, a shadow is not bright. Not that I can see when I go outside the shadow is always darker than the surrounding so that's what I try to create you create something dark more easily with a sharp no yeah with a sharp angle that with an obtuse angle because an obtuse angle or more obtuse angle is going to reflect light towards the viewer and a sharp angle is going to reflect the light away from the viewer which is going to project it's going to project a shadow too so it's going to look darker even if the line is very small uh, I try to put as little blacking thing into uh, my engraving and actually what I try to reproduce is more an edging engraving what I mean that if you rub your finger against engraving, engraving being sharp, it's going to capture some of the oil that you have on your hand. And your, um, the oil is going to be somewhat dirty, even if your hands are very clean, and it's going to age too. So basically what I try to do when I put some black in on it, it's I use um, oil painting. And... Uh, I remove as much as I can and basically whatever is left is what I was not able to remove with, uh, with a rag or a piece of uh, toilet paper. Oh, something I almost forget. So let me show you. That's my uh, sharpening stone. It's called a stone, but it's not really a stone, it's actually diamond um, dust which is a spray on a piece of steel my stone is very well used, let's say I had that one for maybe 15 years I, um, If we are 15 years old, um, diamond stone is going to remain flat and it's still going to remove enough of the metal to resharpen the tool, even so it's carbide. Um, I use diamond stone because, because I'm lazy and I don't want to spend the rest of my life uh, sharpening my tool. If I do it on a diamond tool, it's going to take me between 30 seconds and a minute to sharpen a tool, even if the, the point is broken. And it's going to keep 
my uh, angle uh, sharp and uh, straight, which I find important. Um, what else can I say? Eh, nothing. I'm going to go on a microscope and show you on a microscope the way my tools look like, just in case you might be interested. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to tell me. Ok, bye for now. So here are my tool. That one is a 90 degree angle tool. Um, I mean there is not much to say about it. But I can show you the very point. Oh, if I can... Hold on, I need to move that stuff. Maybe I should put more light. Oh. Huh. Let me... I would point out that I grind my tool myself. Most people are using, I don't know what size, uh, diameter, carbide. I use 332. Uh, always. Because it takes less time to sharpen something which is small than to sharpen something which is big. So having a smaller tool saves me time. Okay, as you can see here, Let me do it a little more. Ah, here you are. Let me. Okay, you get that angle here which is basically perpendicular to the axis of my tool. And then you got that thing here, that's another angle, and you got this stuff here. Um, that's another angle. It's The smaller it is, I did find out, the less the heel is going to damage the um, the ornament when you turn, turn left or right and turn very sharp. If you get a small angle, I'm speaking about the length of the, of the angle more than anything else. If you get a short angle, you are going to damage the, uh, the ornament much less. And uh, sharper the turn or the curve, the smaller the length of the angle need to be, um, <coughs> as not to damage the edge of the tool. As I was saying, that's a 90 degree angle tool, so if you look at it this way, if I can put it under the microscope, ah, here. It is that way. Okay. So you got a diamond shape, of course. And if you look at it this way, it looks like that. I was saying that I use diamond stone and old diamond stone, preferably, because it does remove metal when you sharpen the tool, but it also polish it. And um, I think it works better if you polish the tool. You got less burr, burr on, the, on the side of the tool, so you got uh, 
how would I say, a sharper cut. Okay, that's it for the 90 degree angle tool. Uh, let's see, it's not the right one. This one is my 120 degree tool. Let me Okay, you can see that the angle here at the very top on the belly of the tool is still perpendicular to the axis of the tool. That's the way I like it. I suppose that other people do it other way, but I do it that way. I like it to be short if I can. That too is uh, 332, 330 second of an inch, so it's a pretty small tool and I also grind it myself. And that's the very top. That's the other side. Okay, now I'm going to show you the flat one. The flat one, <laughs> as the name indicates, is flat. Once again, as you can see here, the very top cut a very shallow, not a short angle, and that's all really which is needed. Uh, that too is carbide, but on flat chisel you could actually use high speed steel. I just fine and convenient to have different type of steel, so I use carbide for everything, which is working well for me. The top is like this. I try to have the top perpendicular to the axe of the, of the tool, but obviously in that case I did not succeed very well but it doesn't really matter too much. Now let me try to focus on that step. Voilà. So it is not perfectly perpend uh, yeah, perpendicular to the axe of the tool, but it's good enough to do that. As I was saying, I got some different size can show you the smaller size. Smaller size is that one. I'm going to try to make it side by side. Of course I don't want to. Let me zoom out so you can see. No, you cannot see. Let me try to turn that. Oh, now you can see. Oh, I mean, it's pretty obvious that one is much smaller than the other, but besides the size, they are basically the same. Uh, the only difference that the thick one is going to, you can actually make a curve with that without too much problem. I mean, there is enough carbide to, to keep it strong, let's say. The skinny one, uh, turning with that is really not a good idea. Um, it's going to break. I mean, that thing is uh, very small. Um, if I could find a ruler, I will show you. <coughs>
Agathe Wang. 16 mm, but this should give you a pretty good idea. Okay, the big one is about, I would say, between uh, half and oh, two thirds of a millimeter. And the smaller one is going to be it's calling in one tenth of a millimeter so it's pretty skinny and very fragile but it cut and um, when I try to go in some sort of angle uh, that's what I use and that's all I have to say I hope that it was of some interest to viewer and if not you don't have to look at it I mean to look at the video take care bye